So when my milling machine arrived, it was missing the collet chuck. So that's something I had to order and I've been waiting for it to arrive. Now that it has arrived, I've been able to get in and use the mill and start getting these parts fabricated. Having not actually owned one before though, I'm sort of relying on my memory from when I used to use one in high school and that was very limited even for then. So this is about as giggly as I get as far as tools are concerned. But for the most part so far, I've been really happy with the detail that I've been able to achieve and more to the point how easy these are to clean up in comparison to what I've done in the past. That piece you can see there has just been passed over two or three times with the mill and then just really lightly filed with the file to bring it back to a clean surface. And when you compare that to my previous struggles, that's almost ready for final cleanup and polishing. So the construction slowed down a bit whilst I've been doing some experimentation to work out exactly what I can produce in terms of the parts. Again, on the milling machine, I've worked on starting it out that tailstock piece. This is a piece that wouldn't normally have fitted over that uh, top piece of the uh, Thompson cocking mechanism, but I've been able to use the mill to mill out that inside surface so that it's an appropriate fit as well as taking off the, uh, you can see in there there's a rounded corner, I've been able to remove that as well, which means that that will fit over the top of that and slide, and that'll become the extendable shoulder piece. Uh, the piece that I've done here is just a test to see what it would come out like. The wall thickness of this is a little bit too thin. This is about 1.6mm, I'm going up to something that's about 3mm thick by comparison, but the, uh, the outside diameter of that remains the same, which is why I've been able to start working on that other piece. The other thing that, it's a simple thing, but it's just making life so much easier in terms of the cleanup and what I'm going to be doing. Uh, this cutaway section that you can see here uh, is something that I could probably do by hand or with a, a jigsaw or something like that. But the clearance that you've got between these two halves makes it very, very difficult. So just being able to put it into the mill and mill that section out completely, as well as being able to do simple things like just having a really nice square edge, just makes life so much easier and I'm really enjoying the usage of the machine. I've seen a number of different versions of how this rear piece is made and the version that I'm going to go with is one that has a solid piece. I've gone back to using the resin piece that came with the kit. Uh, I'll cast that up in aluminium so that that becomes a solid insert and it'll sort of insert in there like that. Uh, obviously this is not cut to the right size yet so you can see there's a bit of overlap and it's not flushed up in there. That's because I'm casting this a little bit bigger than it needs to be so that when I mill it back it's a, a very neat tight fit. That will allow me to tap through this into that solid piece to act as both assembly of this piece and to add in the ring there that they use for the shoulder strap. Using the mill once again I've been able to make myself up a shaping tool. You can see that there's a, a deep slot carved in there and then there's a corresponding piece that actually sits on top there. And the idea with that is if you put the sheet metal in between it, you can press in that groove that's needed for where the pump action slides. I've, as I said, I've had some limited success with it. I got to a point where I had a piece that was just about right and just about done, and it broke off. The mistake that I made is when I did the first groove, I had left the, a bit of a burr on this edge, and it was just enough to mess with the integrity of the edge of the metal uh, and create a weak spot, so that when I started to put that bottom curve in it, it created a cut point where it just broke away. Uh, you can see there though in principle it's a nice clean line and it does give us the effect that we're going for and I've got enough of this material left over that I should be able to make another one without any problem at all. So we'll chalk that up to a learning curve and get on to making one that does work. You can see that the shape of that is still a bit gnarly, it's not quite right but obviously I gave up and it broke. Uh, but in terms of raw dimensions uh, it's very close to what we're going for so it should be pretty close to what we need and then I can start looking at milling in the slots for that as well. So it's all sort of looking like a bit of a pile of mess at the moment but it is coming along quite well. And with the experimentation now that I've been doing with the milling machine, I'm just about out of that experimental stage and I'm pretty much ready to start getting into the making of the real parts. I've also already started to rough out a wooden handle that's going to be a replacement for the resin one. So now that I've got a working idea on what I need to achieve, hopefully in the next video will have me showing you some bits that look more like what we're after. Anyway, that's the update for this time guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.